The creators of Bolt Gun didn't overthink the title of their game because they didn't overthink their game. This is a very simple shooter with a very simple premise, but it does the very difficult task of being a great shooter. I'm not kidding. There are a couple of things that keep it from being truly great, but we'll get to those in a moment. Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun is a retro inspired shooter that's modeled after 90s games like Quake and Doom, right down to the pixelated monsters and blocky levels. These games are generally referred to as boomer shooters, and this is as boomer shooter as it gets. It's set in the Warhammer 40k universe and is sort of a light appetizer before Space Marine 2 comes out later this year. By light appetizer, I mean this isn't a full price game and this isn't a full price experience. I played this right after playing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and believe me, this is the exact opposite kind of game. You don't interact with the world other than activating elevators, opening doors, and finding the keys that go to those doors. And to be totally honest, that was pretty refreshing. There's no quiet exploration here or a mystery box storytelling. There's just a bunch of monsters, bullets, blood, and doors that need unlocked. If you're a fan of boomer shooters, or if you're a fan of Warhammer 40k, then this is a must play, full stop. Like, finish the video of course, give me a thumbs up, all that stuff, but otherwise stop what you're doing and go get this $25 game on Xbox, Switch, PlayStation, or PC. But if you're not sold on those two points alone, then hear me out. Yeah, boomer shooters are a dime a dozen, and some of the charm is lost if you're not a Warhammer fan. But damn, this is a hell of a lot of fun in its own right. Somehow this game has a feel to it all its own. You feel like a shooting god cutting a swath of destruction across this blocky world. It reminded me what gaming used to be like before skins and season passes and games that just don't work on day one. This is a blatant throwback to a simpler time when developers just wanted to make fun games because your level of fun was the only currency that mattered. To keep things enjoyable, health and ammo is plentiful, unless you're on the harder difficulty settings. The chainsword is always available, and hell, one of the guns doesn't even need to be reloaded. There's no cosmetics, or attachments, or skill trees, or NPCs, or side quests. There's just a few weapons and a shit ton of monsters to annihilate with impunity. And the annihilation is glorious. Horrock Digital haven't made a shooter before as far as I can tell, but you never know that playing Bolt Gun. One problem I have with these games is sometimes there's so much going on that you can't really keep track of what's actually happening. But no matter how frantic you got in Bolt Gun, the action was always easy to follow. And the controls are fluid, like in a way that very few shooters pull off. I don't know enough about dead zones and aim assists and the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, but to me there's a very noticeable difference in the way shooters with pedigree feel versus all the other shooters out there. But the controls here feel like what Bungie would do if they made this kind of game. Okay, they did make this kind of game back in the 90s, but I'm talking about modern Bungie here. This isn't a side project from Treyarch or a new studio with former developers from DICE. This is an indie studio with no prior shooters in their portfolio and I think that deserves some recognition. Like, holy shit, make some more of these. But next time around, there are a couple of areas that could use some improvement. The first area that needs improvement, and for me the most important, is the level design. I think the levels are intentionally bland to help the action and the ammo stand out, and that part is fine, but I'm talking about the physical layout. It's bad enough that each level reuses rooms and corridors and assets, but what makes it worse is that most of these levels incorporate a lot of symmetry, so it's easy to get turned around and not know which way you are going or which way you are coming from, because it's all exactly the same. There are very few identifying markers in the level. I mean, even a strong light source would go a long way. And anywhere you look is probably identical to a few other spots on the same level. But this complaint probably isn't a surprise to the developers, because more than once I saw arrows on the ground or on the wall, and they just fell out of place like they were slapped on at the last minute. The second area of improvement for me would be the lack of variety after about halfway through the game. You're seeing new enemies and picking up new weapons pretty consistently for the first several hours, but somewhere along the way, there's stopped being very much in the new category. But it's not a long game, so it's not like you have to slog through a lot. The graphics and presentation were really crisp for me. I've already mentioned how easy it was to follow the action on the screen, and it's oozing with the kind of art direction I expect with a Warhammer property. I prefer the default pixelization setting, but even that can be turned down for a more modern look. Sound-wise, my Space Marine and his weapons sounded chunky and menacing. 
Atmospheric sounds were a little sparse, but I think that's because I reviewed this on a Switch, and based on what I've read, there's a good chance it sounds better and more engaging on the other platforms. I was totally enthralled by the first half of this game, in a way I did not expect from a game with such a bare-bones approach. Even the repetitiveness of the rest of it wasn't enough to erase the fact that those first six hours they were as enjoyable as any shooter I've played this year. Sure, I love games with lots of game modes and huge open worlds to explore, and I'm not saying this is on par with AAA heavyweights, but for 25 bucks, this game has an extremely focused experience, and I'm here for it. I give it a bloody thumbs up, and I cannot wait to see what Auroch Digital does next. If you play this on the Switch like I did, and you want to be able to play with it with a standard PlayStation or Xbox controller, check out my video on how to do that. And if you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll enjoy some of my other content. So hit that subscribe button, take a poke around, and thanks for watching.